first on BBC Two, the show that blurs the fantasy with the reality. You decide. And there it is, the final whistle, and they're out. It's all over. Oh, it's a sad moment, this. Who would want to be a football manager? At the first press conference in Cardiff, I realised it was a different setup from what I had imagined. I now know things that I didn't know then, and I really do not want to go on. What was Toshak on about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I was talking about. <laughs> the kit just didn't look the same. <laughs> so I went back home to Spain. There's even a specially inserted tab on which some patronising git has embroidered the word Wales. <laughs> and these thin little stripes are an absolute no-go. And they've overused the Umbro logo. <laughs> I particularly dislike the green, green bit round the collar. <laughs> Sod it. John, 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 John. What? So what are you? I'm off. No, John, John. What? John, you were meant to do the whole show. No, no, I was going to do it, but I didn't like the crowd reaction, you see. <laughs> I think they'd rather have the other block. Right. I'm off. Oh. <laughs> what a disappointment. Well, hello. And welcome to Fantasy Football League. This week, our guest managers are Basil Brush and Roy Hattersley. We'll be reconstructing one of George Best's most controversial moments and we'll be saying a big hello to Billy Bremner. Hello, I'm Billy Bremner. <laughs> <laughs> hello! But first, a few things we noticed from watching football this week. There must have been some flooding at Old Trafford last Saturday because halfway through the commentary for the United Charlton game, John Watson started to drown. He's got four to beat now. Brian Giggs. Oh, the goalkeeper out of Hoxton. Is that the goalkeeper of Blumblib? <laughs> yeah, these East European surnames, they're, they're bugger, aren't they? Anyway, and on Sunday, Barry Davis managed to find poetry in everything that Glenn Hoddle did. Sheer class from this man. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff. Yeah, Chelsea are doing all right, aren't they? At least they've sorted out what to do with Robert Fleck and Tony <laughs> Cascarino. <laughs> <laughs> and as Fraser Digby let seven goals in for Swindon this week, a lot of people are wondering why substitute keeper Nicky Hammond isn't getting a game. <laughs> And now a special treat coming up from the semi-final draw. The camera spending just two seconds too long on Graham Kelly. The draw. The semi-finals will be played on Sunday the 10th of April. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you just watch that all night? Oh. <laughs> and of course the semi-finals are going to be played at Wembley. All the TV pundits have had something to say about that. The only one we didn't really hear from was our own personal favourite, the bloke who does match of the day when Des Lynham's on holiday, Ray Stubbs. Ray Stubbs, <laughs> the bloke who stands in when Des Lynham is away. <laughs> so, Ray, you're the most agreeable man in sport. You're not one to take issue with anyone. Do you think the semi final should be played at Wembley? <laughs> <laughs> so, there you have it. Ray Stubbs, <laughs> the bloke who stands in when Des <laughs> And now over to the man with the second silliest face in sport. <laughs> it's that <laughs> hard. I've been asked to appear on Radio Stockport this week. You're going to you? appear <laughs> on radio? That's well, fantastic. <laughs> Modern technology, it should be very good. Sometimes it's hard to be 
woman. <laughs> With 12 fixtures spread over five days and some teams playing twice, it's been a tricky week for our fancy league managers. The lead has changed hands yet again, and heading the pack is this week's you guest, Battle Brush. It was Newcastle's 7-1 thrashing of Swindon with goals from the previously hibernating Robert Lee and keeping it in the family, Rule Fox, giving him a weekly total of 18 points. <laughs> Roy Hattersley has slipped from his once lofty perch, but could still benefit from a late swing up the table if Ian Rush continues to display the sort of goal poaching form he showed against Everton. Seven points from Manchester United's Paul Ince keeps Karen Brady hot on Basil's trail. But another slow week for Frank, who decided to ignore my advice to play Robbie Fowler. Fowler fired in his first Merseyside derby goal, which cost Frank three much-needed points. Two goals and two assists from Eric Cantona helped Peter Cook to his best ever week. This Cantona assist led to a Mark Hughes special, giving three points to Franny's in City for Eddie Lodge. Roddy Doyle's faith in the much maligned Brian Dean was rewarded first with an assist to Gary Speed, then his first goal since joining Roddy's team. Dean scored another against Villa as Roddy amassed 18 points. Back at the foot of the table then, it's Mandy Smith nine points behind Andrew Ridgely, with Roddy Doyle at long last moving in the right direction. Since the show started, loads of people have sent in teams they've put together based on sort of themes. You know, there's been a Baldi's team, a team of players whose surnames are types of food, and, and someone here uh, sent in a team, what he calls his uh, expensive failures team, and we were going to get him on to discuss that, but unfortunately Liverpool sacked him. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this week, uh, Mr Collins of Salford has tried to put together an Outlaws eleven, and uh, he's done all right with the attack and the midfield. There they are. Yeah, you are. Sort of uh, Diego Maradona for drugs, Rossi for bribery, the usual football stuff. Yeah, but he says he hasn't been able to sort out the defence at all, so he's asked us to help. And we thought of, at right back, ex-Arsenal and England star Peter Storey for counterfeiting gold sovereigns. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, then, then at centre-back, we thought it could be... Ooh, Peter Storey for controlling prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> then the other centre back, what about Peter Storey for brilliantly smuggling pornography in his tyres? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that one. And at left back, oh, I'll go on then. Peter Storey. Hey. For best of all, in my opinion, headbutting a 67 year old lollipop man. <laughs> <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> Why would you want to do that to a lollipop man? Oh, I think Don't I tell me to stop. <laughs> she and Joy. <laughs> and finally, the goalkeeper. Peter Story? No, actually, for once. I want to let them. Very difficult, this, to find a goalkeeper who's committed an offence, but we finally settled on Bert Troutman, Man City's German goalie from the 1950s, because he used to be a prisoner of war. <laughs> <laughs> That's my old team. There they are. Side, I think. Anyway, where's the guest manager? I don't know. Let's see if there's any football on. We might cast the uh, after match so interviews. So I picked up the ball on the halfway line and I've looked up. Uh, why did you ask me to stand in front of these boots to be interviewed? Well, we, we always interview footballers with boots in the background. Why? Well, it, it's because. Oh, I wanted to know! I wanted to know! That. I wanted to know because they always do that! They always do that! Anyway, who is he? It? It's Roy Attersley! Oh, Welcome. you again. Good to be here again. How are you doing? Badly in your league. Yeah. Not so well in the Premiership either for my team. But yes. oh, of course, Wednesday. Well, look, the last time you were on, uh, you were top of the league, and you were top of the league for five weeks, and we thought that's it. It's a sort of a Man United job. You'd stay there forever. What went wrong? Well, the defence started letting goals in, and the forward stopped scoring, and that's formula for not doing very well yeah, in football. Yeah, you've worked the rules of the game out. <laughs> that's a you? bad mix, really. Yes, it's a bad mistake to let that happen. Before we get into your team, you are, I hope you don't mind me saying this, one of the more senior managers in our league. And Se senior means old in old. polite programmes. Yes, right? yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah. And uh, so while you're here, we thought we'd do another edition of a feature that a lot of people have asked to see again, and that is... Old football was rubbish, old football just wasn't very good. Yes, now, this is from the days when old jackets were rubbish as well. 
Just think this bloke was told that he was going to be referee in the cup final and thought, oh, I know what I'll wear. <laughs> here he is telling the captains to make sure they're absolutely rubbish. And this bloke here, he's starting to be a bit good. And the players are worrying a bit, but then his teammate thinks, oh, I'll compensate. <laughs> <laughs> and they used to celebrate everything in this days. Here's a bloke, he's celebrating having his cross intercepted. <laughs> <laughs> and someone's celebrating his mate uh, appealing for a throw in. Now, this isn't a penalty, this is just a defence of said, I'll have a go, we don't care. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Still rubbish. Yeah. And even award ceremonies in those days were rubbish. Um, consistently, it is an award ceremony. They've won the cop, this team, and it, it all looks good, and then, oh dear. <laughs> Actually, he was so unimpressed by winning that cover, he just thought, I'll throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> now, Roy, you're somebody who presumably doesn't agree with that view. I mean, we're just assuming, but you saw a lot of uh, football at that time, and perhaps you disagree. No, football, technically, is far better than it was in those times. Um, because footballers can do things because they're fitter, and they can do things because they're playing with a different sort of ball. As Stanley Matthews mentioned on there, said to me that he never caught the ball or tried to caught the, catch the ball on his chest between October and April because it was so heavy that it knocked him down. <laughs> um. <laughs> Stato, you've got some Stan Matthews statistics on there, which are mind-blowing. Well, he was the longest serving in international. Two, 22 years, 228 days between his first and last cap. Debut at 19, he scored on his debut against Wales uh, back in September in 1934. And then Denmark came uh, when he was 42. He still played internationally. He won everything in the game, apart from the first division. That was the thing that eluded him. Didn't win that first God, division. I wish I'd have asked them. <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. Yeah. Yeah. There was a man on your clip who either was Tommy Lawton or had a Tommy Lawton haircut. It probably was Tommy Lawton. Yeah. And I think he'd have scored a lot of goals in modern football. Well. Were yeah. Tommy Did... Lawton haircuts quite popular? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was because it was so simply done. You had the... It was shears. the old centre party, well, wasn't it? No, no, you had your shears up the side until you could see the boil scars on the back. The boil scars... <laughs> the back. And, of course, and then you flatten the rest down with brilliantine or dripping or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, you've based your look more on Charles Lawton, really. <laughs> sorry. You can't I'm sorry. say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't say that. It came into my head, and I'm sorry if I've said it now. <laughs> Did you know that Stanley Matthews was also crowned King of Ghana? I didn't know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most surreal clip we've got so far. He was actually crowned it's King true. of Ghana. It's true. He went to Ghana. Everyone says you're absolutely a great right, you know, right wing footballer, and not right wing, no, but you know, you're, absolutely right. you're a great footballer. So uh, how, would you, how would you like to be king? <laughs> and nobody does that. Is that no. all that it takes to be King of Ghana? Yeah, exactly. You just have to be not rubbish, and they make you King of Ghana. But apparently. God. But that might not be true. In fact, we've got an, e <laughs> we've got an even more incredible, because apparently Stan Matthews, although he was a real gentleman, had a bit of a temper on him. And we've got a brilliant clip of him here, hacking to death a Portuguese left-back with a Gurkha knife. Oh! 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 see that? That'd be great! That's a brilliant clip, and now we'll just have to hold it back. What a left Oh, it's down. Paul Brush! Paul Brush! Paul Brush! I'll just, I'll just leave. No, I'll leave it here till after the show. Oh, okay. Please yourself. Well, welcome, Thank Paul. You. Now, uh, and for people who watch the show regularly will know, of course, that you are Basil Brush's assistant manager. That's correct. And are you any relation? Uh, only distant. Right. Where, where Basil's not around at the moment. Oh, he's out scouting tonight. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> for what? <laughs> exactly. For rats. Not sure. Paul <laughs> 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 see. And uh, and you still play, of course. Just about. Right. Yes, I'm playing for Haybridge Swifts in the Deodora League. Haybridge Swiss? Swifts. That sort of cake? <laughs> Swifts, you know, oh, birds. Swifts. Oh, right. yeah. Of course, on, of course, attention. Haybridge Swifts. Blimey. <laughs> Blimey. Blimey. Yeah. And, uh, so you, well, you were a West Ham fan, uh, player, rather. Oh, God, someone's gone crazy at the moment. We've got West Ham fans in? Just one. <laughs> you, mate, do you, do you remember Paul? Yeah, I met him at the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I was a little kid, yeah. A 1980 final. Do you remember that, Paul? Yes, yes. Uh... You remember meeting him? Your life must be not your best, Paul. And what was it? What did you think of him? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, just to, just to prove to people what a good player you were, we've got a clip of you here in action for West Ham. 
Hogg coming in. Oh, a turn by Hughes and off the line by Brush. Oy. It's a fantastic bit of action. Well, tell us about that. Well, that was uh, a long time ago when they first used to do live football. Oh, hold on a minute. This, this, this does look right. OK, hold on. I'll sort it. it. OK. Carry on, Paul. Sorry, Paul. And uh, I think the first half an hour of the programme was cut out. <laughs> <laughs> they used to show live football for an hour because Wogan used to interfere and be on at the beginning. Did he? Yeah. used to interfere. You'd know about that. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> so, so they actually interrupted the game to show the it Wogan It started show. late, yes. That was... Uh, Wogan was right? on, so they... Football was second place. Can we stop the interview with Paul now, please? Get, get a bit heavy. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, put it down. No, thanks very much. I told you you should have cleaned them first. <laughs> so, Paul, do you, I mean, we're just talking about older football with Roy, but you've seen a few changes in your time. I mean, publicity and press agents and all that... Have, different now from what they used to be. Well, that's right. There are uh, a lot of changes, much more high profile now. And one of the things that, that, uh, that you see footballers doing all the time now for publicity is appearing in strange photographs. We've got a few of them here, I think. Now, that's Colton Palmer <laughs> <laughs> as Sonic the Hedgehog, would you believe? <laughs> just and like him. Yeah, it is just like him. Now, that's, uh, <laughs> that's Peter Beardsley as a jockey. And the great thing about this is Peter Beardsley actually looks no. more like a jockey than he does a footballer. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? He just looks perfectly at home with the old gear on. This is uh, David Burroughs as Adolf Hitler, <laughs> which is a fantastic idea. I he obviously he, he knew his way to the heart for the West Ham fans, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, there'll be a few letters about that, but we don't care. Do we? <laughs> so here's, here's uh, John Bond getting a bit of money by false pretenses. <laughs> And um, here's uh, another shot of John Barnes getting a bit of money by Paul. <laughs> Actually, we've got a shot of you, Paul, haven't, haven't we? Probably, which is uh, slightly in the same vein. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Your relationship with Basil goes back quite a long time. About yet. 14 years, yes. About 14 years. Did you have a God. nickname when you were a player? Funny enough, it was Basil. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. Basil was on, and he was telling us that people used to call him Paul all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, isn't he? We can start to look at the teams. Let's look I at think. Roy's team. Roy, let's have a look at your team. Now, as we've said, it hasn't been doing as well as it was. Uh, can you pinpoint the problem? Well, Beanie hasn't been playing. Uh, Lucic's been back in the lead to goal. McGrath has only been playing when Aston Villa let a lot of goals in. When Aston Villa didn't let any goals in, for some reason, McGrath wasn't playing. Yeah. That's because he keeps disappearing, though, isn't it? <laughs> well, well, be very careful. Libel cases have been mounted on less evidence than that. Um, Nielsen's been playing... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's you say libel to say Paul McGrath disappeared. It is <laughs> to say he's been mounted, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't put the words in your mouth. Sorry, Roy. Nielsen has been playing a lot against Manchester United, which hasn't been a great help. That, that's another mistake, isn't it? That's right. And you've got, uh, you've got Roy Keane in your team. Who's a good player in the real world, but not in he's the fantasy. fantasy. No, he's a it's, defensive midfield player. He's a defensive midfield player, hardly any assist. Although he was scoring at the start of the football season, not our season. He was scoring quite a lot, wasn't he? And now I, he I seems... Stats will know how many points he's got for me. He yeah, probably three, won't, will he? Oh, six, yeah. yeah, three assists. He hasn't managed a goal for yet, Roy, but yeah. he has got three assists. Three assists. It yeah. is a pity, because you feel if you've got a Man United player on your side that you've, you've, got to you've do cracked okay. it, really. But he's, as you say, more of a defensive one. Mind you, Roy Keane, this is sort of a player's player, isn't he? And he certainly gets the respect from his uh, fellow professionals, as, as we can see here, I think. Here he's having a bit of a word with someone. And, uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that meant uh, nil nil. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me proud to have him in my team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, one thing Roy was going to ask you is that I don't think you've actually you've bought one player so far. And, oh, hold it. What's that? What's that noise? Oh, it's Basil! 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 Basil!
marvellous, marvellous. Oh, that's upset Roy. Last time Roy was on, they were chanting Hattersley, Hattersley, top of the league. Oh, oh that's right. God. <laughs> well, chanting something. Would you like right? to hear the <laughs> You'll be right. back, Roy. Would you like to hear the poem? Yes. Well, why not? Of course. Right. A spark from a fire unconfined caught a girl in her... Yeah, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> she said, oh, what a pain. I feel just like a train. Cos I've got a thing to behind. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Happily, we get, we get a lot of... Uh... <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, Thought you'd lost it there for a minute, but you came in at the end. <laughs> <laughs> So, Paul's here. Paul, you make Paul brushes here. Oh, really? Hello, Paul. How are you? Fine, boss. Do you recognise me? <laughs> yes, I do. You haven't changed much. <laughs> He's different on the spot, isn't he? Are you pleased with the job that Paul's done for you? Oh, very well. Very well. It's a very good job, isn't it, Mr. Sato? Um, Sato. 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 <laughs> yeah, when you're at top, you're two points clear. You're going yes. well. It's marvellous, isn't it? I mean, uh, old Fox has got 14 points for me. Yeah, quite and, expensive. Uh, it costs you five and a half million, so... <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's, the first, that's the first laugh Stato's ever got on <laughs> the thing I is, couldn't quite see it myself, but... And, uh, no, I liked it. Barton, <laughs> it was very good. Barton's got 18, and I got him free! Free! <laughs> mm. <laughs> Basil, Basil. Yes. You may not remember, but you've been a, a, a commentator and a satirist on, on football for many years. Back in 1973, yes. you, still, you still had your finger on the pulse of the game. Yeah, I did, yes. Played very good soccer. <laughs> 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 yeah, very good Show soccer. a clip of Basil. <laughs> <laughs> the Plymouth Sound and you wouldn't have lost to Poland in the qualifying round <laughs> oh, if we did we always had success in the days of good Queen Bess Ba-boom! <laughs> <Ba -boom! laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Bravo! Let's have a look at your team Right, right Here it is uh, Paul, perhaps you could tell us what your basic thoughts were when you put this side together well, we was to get a, some good defenders, which we managed to do, and some creative midfield players. But we were a bit short early on, forward-wise, and Fjortov's come in and performed very well yeah. when Swindon are at home. You've got Waddle. That's right, that's, but the, the biggest disappointment is Waddle hasn't played. Yeah. Hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Since we started. Hang on, hang on, your boss is saying something. Sorry, Basil. He's been injured. Ah, oh, thank you. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might be why he hadn't played. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got some footage here of Chris Waddle. This will, this will cheer you up, actually, Roy. This is when he was a kid, um, and it's actual foot home video. Well, not home video. This, 16 is, uh, mil for this is Chris Waddle as a schoolboy, and you can still see the whole the old Waddle skills here. Look at that body swerve. Watch him go. Oof. Marvellous. And then he went on to model his haircut on your tail, Basil. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> Get off. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> Don't upset Basil, you know. No. He can turn, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him kill four chickens in about eight seconds. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't go to those places anyway, no. you know that. <laughs> Hell of a club, that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now it's time for Phoenix from the Flames. This week, George Best beats Gordon Banks, but the referee beats George Best. Uh, George, can I stop saying that? It's a real honour to meet you, the, you know, the greatest footballer <laughs> ever. It's just a real honour. And to take part in a reconstruction of one of your goals, I mean, I'm just so okay, excited. OK, OK, calm down. Right, now, now I'll be Gordon Banks, George, and yep. you'll be George Best, right? I'll it's pretty, yeah. pretty straightforward. So I'll just, I'll stick the post okay. down. Well, hold on, hold go on. For it. What, what about me? Eh? Hey? <laughs> well, it, it's sort of a two-man thing, you know, it's just sort of Gordon Banks and George Best. There's no room for you, really. I could be George. Mm, all right, then. OK, is there a boutique anywhere I can pose in front of? <laughs> well, I'll do it, you know. <laughs> Let's just practice this first. No, I never turn up for training. He's <laughs> 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 probably no, been I'm drinking or something. <laughs> Not that I suggest you... Of course you <laughs> Either I play George Best or I get it. Oh, well... You, you could be Gordon Banks. I mean, that would be... 
Uh, not really, no. no. Oh, okay. Do I'll be one of the England defenders? That'd be all right, wouldn't he? <coughs> yeah. You could be Peter Story. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but that doesn't make him a bad person, does it, George? Not, not really, no, no. All He's right, a nice then. guy, really. Yeah. All right. You be Peter Story, I'll be Gordon Banks, and you be George Best. All right, sounds good. Come on. So, what happened next, George? Well, uh, Peter Story passed it back to uh, Gordon Banks. Gordon? What? You're not interested in any, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Banks would pick it up. In those days, the keepers could take as many steps as they wanted. Uh, and I, I'd watch Banks. I knew he threw it up in the air before he cleared it. And, the, you know, we, we ducked and dive against each other a little bit. He throws it up in the air. I flicked it uh, when he tossed it in the air. It bounced once and uh, I had it into the goal. Banks being driven left. And was that a foul? The whistle has not gone. Best! Go away! <laughs> Foul given! So what happened? Why, was, why did the ref disallow it? Well, I asked him uh, right away and he, he didn't seem to know. And then afterwards he's, he had time to think. He said it was for dangerous play, but I'm not too sure. Right. Well, perhaps we should have, a, have another look at it then. I'll, I'll tell you what, Dave, you be Gordon Banks this time. Oh, mate. good. I didn't want to be George Best anyway. I'd only end up swearing at that nice Terry Wogan. Disgraceful. <laughs> Please don't be <laughs> <laughs> Banks being driven left. Boss said, Bado, because you have to call footballers with an O or a Y on the, the end of their name. Right. Bad no bad. clever questions. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. Quick interview with me. Use up the time. OK. So, Ray, you're the most agreeable man in sport. You're not likely to take issue with anyone. Do you think the semi final should be played at Wembley? <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> it's, no good. it's not what I'm used to. Can you do something a bit more like what I'm used to? Uh, how about if I went, come on, the Albion? <laughs> come on, you baggies, come on, you baggies. That's, 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 the that's the way. Well, I think that's about it, really. Thanks to Roy, thanks to Paul, thanks to Basil. Next week's guests are Sue Johnston and Bob Mortimer. That's all we've got time for. That's all we've got time for? <laughs> you can't... I haven't given Mr Stadham his, his present yet. Have I, Mr Stadham? It's your present. Right? Oh. It's your, your turn to pick it up. Oh, well, thanks very much. It is. <laughs> That's how you should laugh at my jokes. <laughs> 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 to write to us or you want information about playing Fantasy League, our address is Fantasy Football League, PO Box 168, London WC2H 7BU.